Today is all about performing 10 common tasks so quickly it looks like magic. You'll be able to track me, of course, but when you go to do them, you'll be smoking. Why? Just for the sheer pleasure of being able to flex in Photoshop. As you may know, Photoshop now offers auto numbering. It's a half-baked feature though, so it's rarely welcome, in which case bring up the paragraph panel and just go ahead and reset. However, that also gets rid of the formatting, so my preferred way to work is to select all that text and copy it. And then what I'm going to do is create a new text block up here, a new text object. I'm not going to have any numbers, so I'm going to get rid of those indents. And then I'll just go ahead and paste my text without formatting. And I end up with this here. And then if you want your layer effects, all you have to do is Alt or Option drag them. This scene would look a lot more rustic if it weren't for all these power lines. So I'll create a new layer after all. I don't want to hurt the original. Then I'll just go ahead and switch tools right here. And and I'll switch a couple of settings and that way I can click and shift click along each one of these lines like so. Even if the line curves, you can express it as a kind of straight line by clicking and shift clicking. I have an awful lot going on up here, so I'll just drag around. Now, some of these lines are so close to each other, notice this right here, that you might prefer just to take them on all at once with a big, huge brush like so. And I'll just go ahead and shift click a couple of times, and then when you're ready, when you feel like you've hit everything, go ahead and press the enter key. And believe it or not, this is really truly the final result. Now I want to make this image wider, but not using Generative Expand because that feature still delivers low res results and doing it the right way doesn't take any more time. So I'll go ahead and bring up the canvas size command and I'll make this image incrementally wider, not too much because you don't want to have to add too much to the image at a time. And I'll go ahead and select this region. Just make sure that it's under a megapixel. In my case, it's half a megapixel. And then you just need to click Generative Fill and let it rip. You can, of course, peruse the usual three variations. But in my case, I'm just going to select this right-hand region and repeat the process. And the result is a wider image with new foliage that matches the resolution of that original photo. Here's an impressive one. Make a repeating flower pattern. It doesn't have to be flowers, of course. It can be anything, but I'm going to start with these flowers that I created inside Firefly. Notice I've got this thing on an independent layer. The first thing I'm going to do is right click and choose convert to smart object. Next, I'm going to make a copy just by pressing control J, turn off that copy, select the original right there, and we're going to make it super tiny. So control T, command T on the Mac, and notice up here in the options bar, the width value there, I'm going to change it to 20 pixels, PX, in order to make it very dinky indeed. Now I need to get rid of the smart object for a second. So I'll press control Control A, Control J, Command A, J on the Mac. And so I have this independent, not a smart object layer right here called Layer 1. I am now going to press Control Alt T or Command Option T in the Mac in order to make a transform a copy is the idea. And now notice the Delta icon is turned on up here in the Options bar. I'm going to change the X value to 3 and I'll take the Y value up to 6. Actually, you know what? I want next value four. And now I'm going to change the width value to 108%. They're both locked into alignment with each other, width and height, so they'll, they'll scale proportionally. And I'll change the angle value to 33 degrees, which is impossible to see that that worked. Hang on about that one, and I'm just going to get rid of both these layers. So there they go. Now that I've established the pattern, I can press mash your fist T. So it's control shift alt T here on the PC, command shift option T on the Mac. And unfortunately, you have to do that over and over again. You can't just press that keyboard shortcut in order to make all your duplicates. But notice it's not necessarily going to keep up with you the whole time either. But you want to make sure that you fill in this entire region and then what I'm going to do is turn on the original flower layer. Now you might say, gee whiz, Deke, that thing you just created doesn't look nearly as cool as that thing you showed us at the outset, which is why now. The next quick trick is how to reverse the order of a bunch of layers. So check this out. I want you to see this. We have a ton of layers inside this document because I did all that repetition. And so if I click down here in the bottom left corner of the image window, you've got this item. 
layer count and it will show you that we've got 76 layers which would be a big pain in the neck to select all of them so i'm just going to press Control alt a command option a on the mac in order to select every single layer except for the flat background so it will not get selected i also want to leave alone the very top flower the big one and so i'll press the control key command key on the mac and click on an empty portion of that layer and now all you have to do to reverse the order of every single selected layer is go to the layer menu choose the range and choose this guy right here reverse now you might be thinking hey deke you've, you've neglected to mention why in the world you use smart objects well if i hadn't then as i scaled these flowers up from a mere 20 pixels wide by 108 percent factors at a time they would end up looking very pixelated but because i'm referring to that original flower pattern every single time everything looks great which means i can now turn around and edit that original smart object in order to create a slightly different effect as we're seeing right here and so by editing one you edit all and so what we want to do what i want to do is rotate this flower but don't rotate it in its current form because that'll just rotate that one object instead double click on it in order to gain access to the original and then press Control T command T on the Mac in order to enter the free transform mode and I'm gonna change the rotate value to 22.5 degrees why because that's half of 45 degrees anyway I'm gonna accept that and now I'll just go ahead and close this one smart object click yes to say that's gonna be the save button on the Mac and a moment later we'll see every single one of these flowers change and so this is before and this is after and that's because every smart object is a clone of the original hey real quick are you wondering where i got those transformation values i mean how did i magically know to move the flower so many pixels scale it 108 percent and rotate it 33 degrees i figured it out in a totally different program illustrator to learn how join me at my patreon which is patreon.com slash deke now and now back to those 10 super fast tasks now let's say I want to add a simple vignette. You can work with lens correction or camera raw, but with 78 layers inside this composition, there's not really anything to attach the vignette to. So we need to make it an independent layer, which I'm going to do by creating a gradient layer right here. I'll just go ahead and call it vignette as well. And notice that I'm going to change the style to radial. By default, you're going to get the wrong effect, so I'll just go ahead and turn on reverse. That is giving us too much black, and so I'll change the angle value to zero degrees for whatever reason that works. And I might take the scale value up just a little bit as well. Now, I don't want it to be a black vignette. I want it to have a little bit of color. So I'll click on that gradient guy, get rid of one of these stops. So I'm just working with one color and one color only. And I'll set it to a very deep shade of blue, as we're seeing right here. Click OK until I get out of those dialog boxes and press Shift Alt M, Shift Option M on the Mac in order to change the blend mode right here to multiply. And this is without the vignette, this is with. All right, here's the ultimate flex. Create a synthetic star field absolutely from scratch every time you're going to get a different effect. And you can pull it off in a minute and change. All you need is some black, so I'll just call it that. And then I'll convert it to a smart object so we can apply a sequence of filters. Now, these are going to go by pretty quickly. Add noise, settings up to you. You can always go back and adjust them because, after all, they are editable smart filters. And now I'll choose Gaussian Blur 2 is a good place to start, 2.0 and then I will apply a smart adjustment in the form of levels these are some great values black point of 38 by the way and white point of 46 so we have a lot of contrast and then because I'm feeling over the top we're going to go with an obligatory lens flare settings are up to you now I'm working in Photoshop beta by the way so I'm going to choose generate image so that I can enter a prompt and say photo notice lens flare Milky Way so you can read all about that a moment later you'll have a variation I recommend you change the blend mode to either overlay or to hard light so play with those two guys and then you can cycle through your variations 
until you find one that you like. This is one of my favorites going way back. Turn any photo into a pro quality sepia tone. This guy comes to us, by the way, from the Dreamstime Image Library. Link in the description. First step is to convert him to black and white. You can do that with a black and white adjustment layer. It doesn't really matter. I'll just click auto. Now I want to load the tones as a selection outline by switching to the channels panel, pressing the control key or the command key on the Mac and clicking on any one of these channels. Doesn't matter which because they're all the same. Then I'll switch back to the layer panel. I'll drop down to the black white icon and choose solid color and I'll name this guy sepia for obvious reasons and I came up with these values hue 30 saturation 50 and brightness 100 and now I'll change the blend mode to multiply at first that's not going to look right that's because we have a luminance mask we want a density mask so click on the layer mask icon and press Control I command I on the Mac and we now have professionally infused sepia now let's say you want to color balance an image. This one has a predominantly blue color cast. The last thing you'd want to do is choose color balance, which is easily the worst command in Photoshop to have a keyboard shortcut. It'll just make you look like a bumbling fool. Instead, what you want to do is convert this image to a smart object. That way you can apply a camera raw filter right here as an editable smart filter. Now you don't have to go digging around for the options. All you need to do is press the shift key. Notice that eyedropper and click on something that ought to be a neutral gray. If you have a gray card like I do, you can shift drag around it like so. Now that is going to make the image way too bright, so I'll go ahead and take down my exposure value a little bit, and then I will accept my change. Now because this is an editable smart filter, if you feel like you've gone too far, just double click on the slider icons over here in the layers panel, and then take down the opacity value like so. Click OK, and just to give you a sense, this is the before image, and this is after. Got some ideas of your own? By all means, comment, not to mention like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And don't forget, if you want to learn how I came up with the move, scale, and rotate values needed to pull off that elaborate flower pattern, join me at patreon.com slash deeknow. And then go to deek.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deek McClellan. This is Deek Now.